my company did a project in Costa Mesa when she was on the city council called SoCo. And uh, that's been an extremely successful project in the city and transformative for the neighborhood. And uh, I appreciated her then, and I look forward to working with her again here. Um, Supervisor Foley, for those that don't know, is extremely dedicated to transparency and accountability, and we welcome that. Uh, I'd also like to just take a minute before we get started to also thank um, the County of Orange. Uh, we have spent a tremendous amount of time with County of Orange with uh, both uh, real estate as well as uh, public works uh, in processing all of our plans and their staff is extremely dedicated, hardworking, and uh, we could not be here today without them. I'd also like to, to thank the city of Dana Point. Uh, much of what we have to show for where we are in terms of our, um, our plans, our design, has been working very, very closely with the city. So Mike Killebrew, uh, Kelly, um, uh, Brenda, Kurth, the entire crew over there has been very, very helpful and very hardworking. So we appreciate their help as well. Um, I've been asked to kind of touch on a few things as far as the commercial core goes. Number one, what's been done uh, and, and what's planned and, and quite frankly, what the schedule is going forward. Uh, as is often the case in these kinds of projects, so much of what we do uh, is not visible until we're actually in a position to break ground. Uh, we're not, we haven't done that yet on the, at least on the land side, but we're looking forward to doing that very soon and I'll explain our schedule going forward. So, but what I do want to do is shed some light for all of you on things that we've done. And really I, I, I categorize those in two buckets. One is operationally, uh, and the second is as far as construction or what we call pre-construction goes. And there's a great deal that's been accomplished in both of those areas. In terms of operations, uh, when we took over uh, a little less than five years ago, uh, we did uh, invest in, and refresh all the existing buildings in and around the retail uh, for the project. Paint, landscaping, roof repairs, uh, parking lot repairs, we provided new wayfinding signs, and new landscaping, um, you know, uh, new parking lot lighting. Uh, a lot of this was, uh, there's a lot of deferred maintenance, and while we knew we were eventually going to be redeveloping everything, it was important for us to, uh, to inject some TLC into the existing improvements because they sure needed it. Um, Tenant related, uh, the other thing that we did that I think was very impactful for our tenants, as evidenced by the fact that many of them have posted record sales since we took over, uh, is we installed professional, watchful, attentive property management. Uh, we also um, hired a full-time marketing director, and um, Emma uh, has, uh, has actually worked uh, tirelessly um, to basically redesign the website, uh, for, started producing a lot more events than the typical, um, and uh, uh, you know, and, and, and quite frankly, the wonderful events that, that the harbor has been long known for. Uh, we've entered into partnerships with local media. Uh, we've greatly improved social media presence and uh, done a lot of direct tenant promotion and, and much more in that regard. Uh, we also worked with a lot of our tenants, particularly through COVID. Um, COVID was, was uh, very you know, uh, difficult on all of our tenants and we um, encouraged them with uh, improvements to their point of sale systems. Uh, website presences, takeout sales. We worked with them to create and expand outdoor patio spaces, uh, all of which had a favorable impact on the revenue uh, at a very, very difficult time. Um, so there were a number of things that were done in that regard. And, and the other thing that we did, which I think goes unnoticed, but it's very important to mention, is we engaged in a lot of sustainability and green initiatives. Um, we installed water filtration systems throughout the harbor. Um, and these include, include both screens as well as carbon filters at all the storm drain, uh, the storms that, 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 that end up quite frankly going into the, uh, into the water here. So um, those filtration systems capture chemicals, oils, gas, sediments, 
and prevent all those things from filtering into the harbor. Um, and that's been a very successful program since we, since we took over. We converted all of our, our exterior parking lot lights and lighting throughout the project to LEDs. So we saved substantially on, uh, on efficiencies there. Uh, we have a fishing line recycling program that we instituted. Uh, and co have collected in a short amount of time over 100 pounds of, of uh, a fishing line. That line is actually, we have a partner, and that line is actually uh, recycled and used for outdoor furniture, uh, which is pretty cool actually. And, uh, and it's actually used in many cases to, um, to recycle fishing line itself. So uh, that's been a great partnership. Stand up for trash. Um, you know, we instituted a harbor-wide balloon ban, and um, that obviously is something we felt was very important, and so we did that as well. Uh, we converted all of our, uh, our gas-powered landscape and equipment to electric. Doesn't sound like a lot, but actually mowers and blowers are now quieter, there's less carbon emissions, much better for the customers that we have here in the harbor, and uh, that's been a welcome change. Um, we installed, in many cases, drought-tolerant light, uh, or drought-tolerant landscape material throughout the harbor whenever we could. Uh, and that's been handy since uh, the water district has asked us all uh, to, to, to basically terminate uh, uh, much of our irrigation systems. Um, events. We are now the proud headline sponsor for Festival of Wales, State of the City, Turkey Trot. Uh, we've hosted a number of blood drives. We've uh, conducted several public markets and uh, art fairs, um, vintage surfboard clubs, expanded our holiday light program dramatically. Um, we've done some public art installations, um, drive-in movie nights, live music through our summer music series. Um, and we've uh, partnered, which is one of the things that, that, that uh, I'm particularly happy about, we partnered with a group called Surf and Turf Therapy, which basically is a great cause for offering water therapy and surf lessons for uh, special needs children. Um, let me turn now to construction and the things that we've done from a construction perspective. We, uh, when we first took over, before COVID, we actually conducted a lot of community outreach. And, um, and through that process, as well as quite frankly, having to go through COVID and, um, and, and seeing what, uh, you know, what that did for us here and did to us here, is we, um, we really took a, uh, a concerted effort to focus on what we call healthy buildings and healthy spaces, uh, which are quite frankly here to stay. So uh, through those processes and experiences, we actually had an opportunity to improve a lot of our design for the commercial core buildings. Um, natural lighting, ventilation, green thinking, uh, enjoyment of the water were all things uh, that um, were enhanced in our design and um, and that, I think, uh, as we can see when we begin to talk about the project, you can see how that shows up in the, in the design of the project, the final design of the project. We also, uh, since taking over, went head first into, um, you know, into all of our higher level planning, construct pre-construction planning for the harbor, um, utility planning, soils investigations, testing, and pre-construction work, um, all of that needed to make its way into our final design. Um, as a result, uh, we worked very closely with the city and we made adjustments to our coastal development permit uh, to improve design, uh, account for every utility requirement, soil stabilization needs, uh, methods of construction, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, we actually started with schematic design uh, development drawings. We, that led us into uh, uh, design development drawings, which is a higher level. And then we finally and most recently completed and submitted all of our construction level drawings to the county. Okay, Brian, I'm gonna pause you for a sure. minute. Okay, so I, I, I know that you're, you've gone through the permitting process and now you're kind of moving forward. 
Um, I know that a lot of people are concerned given the economics of the project, given the current economic environment, the banks, etc. And they're wanting to know if the land side redevelopment is at risk. Can you address that? It is not. Okay. Uh, we are. Um, we are, we are, as you mentioned, and uh, in, in, uh, we've made a tremendous amount of progress for the county, and we are in a position, I'm glad to say, to actually be able to start construction on our first phase of construction on the land side, which is the parking structure. Okay, and then so the five-year timeline is still, a, 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 that's what you're yes. expecting? Yes, okay. for, for us, for the land side, and specifically the commercial court, it's a three-year time frame. So once we start that parking structure, we would roll right into our, our additional phases. There are five, roughly five phases total. The first phase involves two sequential phases, the parking structure and all the work. Can you talk about the parking structure? Because I know that's one of the questions too, is what happens to the construction of the new parking and events facility? So you're gonna talk about that. Okay, uh, yeah, so, so um, we actually are scheduled now to start construction on the parking structure in January of next year. Oh, we're doing everything we, we're doing everything we can to speed that up. Many, many, we cannot start construction until we have all of our utility permits in place. It's worth talking about. The utility permits, first of all, this the harbor is over 50 years old, and all of the utility infrastructure is old and in dire need of redesign and replacement. We've been working very closely with all the utility providers in the harbor, including the South Coast Water District, to, uh, uh, to basically uh, complete uh, a really a tri-party agreement between us, the county, and the district. And uh, it's been a very complicated process. There are 16 different scopes of work uh, for water and sewer alone. Each one of those scopes of works requires budgeting, uh, you know, cost sharing, and documentation with a utility permit. It is out of our control. Much of it is out of our control. What's the expected timeline for getting those permits in place? We, we, we've made a tremendous amount of progress with the district and the other agencies, utility agencies. I think we should be in a position to have all those wrapped up, certainly in the next two or three months. Okay. Again, it's, we've been at it with them for a long time. It's been a very tedious and, and detailed process. Quite frankly, the district has is, is done a great job. Their staff has done a great job uh, getting us to this point. Our team has done a fabulous job. It's very tedious and very detailed. And it must be done before we can get to building permit issues. We have over 400 conditions of approval. Many of you don't know that. Over 400 conditions of approval in our project that we have to satisfy either before or during our construction process. Many of these conditions of approvals involve uh, reports, memorandum, <coughs> studies, and things that we would typically not do in a regular private, private uh, project. Can this you is, walk this us through the phasing? Can you just walk us through the phasing real quick? And then um, also sure. talk about what are some of the, like, you have some conceptual uh, renderings. Maybe walk through that. We do. We're, we're going to hold all questions. If you have a question, put it, put it on the cards. So we don't have disruption so that we can get through the program. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do want to also note that the marina and the commercial core did swap start dates on construction. So the marina uh, was not originally anticipated to start as early as it did, but we were glad to actually uh, get all of our approvals a little quicker than we, we thought, and so we're in a position to start that as well. One of the reasons why we were able to start the marina, in addition to the fact that it needed it badly, is uh, the fact that the utility infrastructure that's servicing the marina uh, can be, can be utilized and can utilize the existing utility infrastructure. Everything we're doing on the land side is a substantial up design and upgrade from what exists today. We cannot use the existing infrastructure. So that's why these utility permits, permits are very important. In terms of phasing, uh, once we start the commercial core, it is roughly a, it's a five phase construction process. As I mentioned, our first phase is really the first two. It involves the parking structure itself, 
all the site work around the parking structure and actually includes the new entry road uh, terminus of Golden Lantern into the project. So, uh, and then this, the, the next phase, which is phase three, would be all of our waterfront buildings, known as buildings six through 12. Then we roll to the wharf buildings, and then we finish with a surface parking lot on Data Point Harbor Drive. So I think, Emma, are you trying to point to a yes. pointer? I don't think anyone knows that. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so this is the parking structure, and if you point to the entrance road as well, all of that entrance road is in our initial phase, and all of the surface parking lot, Emma, and, and the Valerie queuing area in front of the parking structure is all included as well. In, in, the, in essentially the first phase. That encompasses phase one and phase two. The next phase. What's the timeline for that? The, it, it, 12 months. Okay. Yeah. And the next phase is uh, are all the waterfront buildings that you see there, uh, starting with what we call building six, reaching all the way down to the hotel, which is our building 12. Then we jump to the wharf, and it's building one through buildings 5A. Okay, I have a question about the wharf. Sure. So one of the questions that a member of the public asked, the original plan was to rescan and remodel the wharf buildings, uh, and now it's being torn down. Can you address that? They're not, well, actually, um, uh, one of the buildings is being torn down because it's just, it's beyond its useful life. Uh, and many of these buildings involve all the utility infrastructure because what's there is completely deficient. So um, we literally have to tear down one of the buildings, and uh, the rest of the buildings do get a, a, an even more extensive remodel than was anticipated for the same reasons. Dry rot, termite damage, uh, inadequate utility infrastructure, all that is, is just not usable. They're just beyond their useful life. So the remodel is very extensive. And then the ne next after that, uh, after we finish the wharf, is coming to the first surface parking lot that I was highlighting there, which uh, would be our last phase and a very quick, quick phase of that. Okay. And so the timeline for completion is. If 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 we're if we started as we're as we're contemplating in, in uh, January of uh, of next year, and, and again, you know, if we can get everything done, our our objective is to start even sooner. Uh, it would be a three-year process. Okay, so by 2026, uh, end of year. Right? That's right. Okay. All right, and then there's another question about the wharf. Um, what will the parking and access to the wharf businesses look like during construction of the parking structure and Mariner's Village? Uh, our phasing plan has micro moves in it, which would allow traffic to continue to circulate down to the wharf and then we would have other uh, parking areas designated. So we, you know, the, the, the reason for the phasing plan is to maintain accessibility to both the water for the boaters and to the existing merchants during construction. None of that has changed. Okay, so one question uh, that's posed by the merchants is part of the original proposal was that the current tenants would have an opportunity to be in the revitalized harbor. Uh, can you talk about that and what are the opportunities for the current tenants? Uh, yes, uh, again, you know, because the time frame is such that our first phase is 12 months, and, you know, we're still a little bit away from starting that first phase, uh, we're just not quite ready to start, you know, uh, negotiating new leases, frankly. And so I, the, the answer is yes, our existing tenants, we, and we've engaged in, in discussions with a number of them already, uh, we'll have an opportunity to stay in the harbor, um, and, uh, but you know, we will have uh, uh, new buildings and uh, new floor plates and things that will obviously have to be considered for all the tenants that are here in terms of adequate sizing and, and their business models going forward and that sort of thing. Okay, I know that uh, for businesses, especially small businesses, who maybe don't have a lot of capital to extend uh, and to plan, so one of the concerns that I think some people have is that they need to have sufficient notice when the building is going to get torn down, when there's going to be tenant improvements done, whatever the case may be, how are we going to get them the proper notice that's you know reasonable enough so that they can plan for their business and their life? It, it, you know, when we're able to secure all of our our permits, you know, including our utility permits, and we're able to circulate to start construction on the calendar, 
then we'll be in a position definitively to put together a schedule and work with all of the existing tenants along those lines, okay. on, those, on those dates. Okay, and then that'll be something that'll be uh, public, that we can post and we can have a, a designated time period, knowing that with any project, there's always gonna be maybe uh, some kind of a change in timing just because you don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, we're dealing with the OC streetcar, we didn't know we we're gonna have all these uh, utility issues, so it's delayed the project. But you will have something that will be transparent so the public can know the timing that's correct. And look, you know, uh, once we're able to circle that date on the calendar, uh, it also gives us the opportunity with all of our existing tenants to, uh, you know, no one likes to be on a month to month lease. So it'll give us the opportunity to actually move those leases from month to month to, to longer terms so tenants can plan better. Again, you know, until we have specific dates on the calendar, it makes it a little challenging, but that is our goal is to, to be able to offer that. So in some cases, we've had tenants come to us and say, I'd like to reinvest a little bit in my business, even for the short term, but it's difficult to do when you're on a month-to-month -month lease. So we'll, we'll have the opportunity to offer a little longer terms to make planning a little bit more uh, reasonable. Okay, so one of the other questions, which I think is a great question, you know, there's a community harbor, it's a public harbor. Will the residents and the local community have any uh, ability to sort of weigh in on what retail and restaurants stay here in the harbor or come here? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I think that. <laughs> I mean, you heard he said yes. Yeah. It is. Uh, you know, we have we have look we have uh, we have uh, economic models that we have to adhere, adhere to uh, in order to in order to deliver what we said we were going to deliver. You know, we've got to we've got to achieve certain financial hurdles. And, and look, our, 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 many of our tenants have, have done an amazing job, um, particularly through COVID, uh, and, and they're doing all the right things, and, um, and they, they deserve an opportunity to stay in the harbor. We've always assured them that they'd have that opportunity, but we can't, we can't, uh, we can't keep rents at their current level and be able to do what we want to do. Just can't do it. That's not something the county gets involved in, uh, but at the same time, I think the community has spoken pretty loudly to me that there are some favorites here that have long-term tenants that they'd like to see stay here. So I'm just gonna express publicly that I want you to work towards making sure that the community favorites are uh, retained and that they will be, you know, negotiations will, will be fair, understanding the, the kind of uh, venues they are, okay? Yeah, there, there's a combination, as you can see on the plan, of surface parking and uh, in the parking structure. And, uh, you know, I, I'm delighted to say that one of the, one of the biggest issues we, we've always heard from the community is we don't have enough parking. Yeah. And this plan uh, has an abundance of parking. Great. So there's not, we have a, a number of uh, demand generators when it comes to parking, not only our, our tenants, but we have Catherine Express, we have, uh, you know, we've got uh, sport fishing. Uh, we have uh, people that just want to come down to the harbor and, and walk the harbor. So our, our objective from the start was to uh, create um, more parking than is actually required. And we did that. Okay, moving on to the okay. next area. So, you know, a lot of priorities in the plan, lots of open spaces, lots of parkscape along the water. Uh, it's gonna be a great project. Uh, to just come down and, and, and you know perform your, your morning walks or afternoon walks around the harbor. Uh, we're enhancing the boardwalk throughout the uh, project, and uh, you know this is one of the largest walkable harbors on the on the on the west coast, and so we're going to continue to celebrate that. Uh, we created a lot of outdoor entertainment spaces for live music, uh, events, and things like that. Um, 
a lot of soft seating areas, fire pits, just wonderful places to just commune along the waterfront. Um, the buildings, um, four-sided architecture, lots of natural materials, and um, you know, lots of spaces that accordion open for indoor outdoor spaces. Uh, so lots of natural, you know, light, airflow, um, and just a great way to hang out and be on the water. A lot of public art throughout the entire project that we're doing. Um, let me roll through, Emma. And this is a great view of the entrance to the project. Uh, you can see the parking structure off to the left. We've got a large queuing area. We have a lot of the hotels want to bring hotel guests down here. It's the way it is now and will continue to increase. So we needed a way to really queue large uh, vehicles through here, buses and things like that. So we created a valley drop-off area for people that prefer that and uh, lots of self-parking opportunities as well. This is a great view of the waterfront so you can begin to see how we've activated. Sea level rise actually forced us to increase the, the, the height of our building foundations which is actually kind of nice because now we have a wonderful view from the first floor as well as the second floor of these spaces. Uh, kind of a natural grade down to the water and, um, and really we've created two boardwalks. One along the storefronts for the, for the shops themselves and another uh, along the uh, waterfront. that we were able to program into our uh, plan is exactly that. We, we, we actually have um, contemplated bringing in, you know, AV and, uh, you know, uh, electrical and things like that because, because really what we see is a, um, a regular activation of events. Food and wine, farmers markets, uh, you know, craft fairs, lots of live music opportunities. Um, so, you know, all of those have been factored into the design, ways to, you know, literally to transform spaces throughout the project to be able to accommodate those kinds of activities. Thank you. And sure. I want to ask, uh, we have Matt Miller, who's our uh, Office of Real Estate, who's here. And so there's a lot of questions that people have asked about how do we have a private operator in a public harbor? And I think your best to answer that question, if you could answer that real quick. Sure. Sure. So um, the harbor is still a public facility. It's still owned and overseen by the county. Um, the what we're dealing with is is a partnership. So uh, some years ago, between we'll say 2012 and 2017, the board of supervisors considered a variety of different structures to help uh, kind of kickstart the revitalization, which some of you are probably aware of been going on, you know, in, in conceptual uh, terms for years. Um, so. What was chosen was what's called the master lease P3 structure. So while there is a, pub, a private entity that's operating the harbor, it is still public. It's a public lease, um, it's public oversight. You have a, a public supervisor who's overseeing it as well as the, the rest of the staff. We do have a full CEO real estate staff at the county that works with the partners. Sometimes they like us, sometimes they don't. Um, but you know, you should be assured that there is a full-time staff that is overseeing, administering the harbor, working with them, working with the supervisor to make sure that public concerns are, are heard and responded to. So sometimes you might not get a response from the, the, the internal county staff, but you know, we work, do work with the supervisor and with the partners to make sure that we maintain the, you know, the, the kind of local character that I know that's important to a lot of you. I've been working with, with and in the harbor for about 20 years. Um, so I'm aware, I've, I've heard, and I know that, that it's, it's important that it remain uh, kind of a small boat marina that it has always been. Um, okay, so that, I have another question. So uh, one, of the, one of the questions, a long one, okay, and I think you're best to answer it, 
is has the master ground lease and or the Coastal Commission permit been amended, therefore exonerating the Inner Point Harbor Partners from any liabilities generated by their failure to adhere to the stipulations, regulations, or specifications contained within these two documents? No. Okay. Um, so there was one amendment that the board approved a little over a year and a half ago that dealt a little um, with phasing and some financing issues, but it didn't change any of the terms of the ground lease, any of the obligations of the partners. Um, as Brian said, um, because of some of the issues we had with utilities, there were the marina and the commercial core swap start dates. Um, so the, the board, the lease did have a requirement to commence construction this past year. Um, and so we worked with them to make sure that construction started. Uh, you know, beyond that, there really there haven't been any issues with the lease, any defaults, and the uh, the <coughs> approvals that were provided by the Coastal Commission gosh, to 2006, 2008, are really remain the same. Uh, the hotels are working uh, through the Coastal Commission process to add another hotel, but beyond that, the square footage, the general complexion of the harbor has stayed the same as originally contemplated in the local coastal. So, um, let's just say the timeline that's been explained here tonight isn't met. Is there any kind of penalty for not meeting the timeline? Yes. Yes, there, the, there, are, there would be a default under the lease. Um, there are, you know, delaying the, um, the commencement date and completion dates could theoretically have um, consequences related to uh, non-payment of rent and different things like that, that that are anticipated to happen over the timeline. Um, so it would be a default and there could be consequences. It really depends on what the default is, um, but you know that's something that we're hoping, hoping is not going to happen. So that's one of those issues that I think there is an interpretation in the public at some po point that uh, the county has no oversight over this and there's nothing that can be done if there was a delay and the project doesn't get completed. So that's not true, right? That, that is not true, okay. and um, as a matter of fact, that is that's kind of the real estate's whole job is to make sure that not only the partners but all of the various leases the county has are adhered to and that they, they benefit the taxpayers they're supposed to. They're and you now report to me, so you know. I do. Yes, okay. So you, know. you know where to find me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then another question, Matt. Um, so the Matt, and I'm going to keep you there because there's a funding question. Okay. The master lease between Orange County and Dana Point Harbor Partners requires evidence of financing prior to the start of any of the three components. When will Dana Point Harbor Partners provide proper evidence of financing? If they don't, how will they pay for the construction of the commercial core? So can you address the what is expected in terms of evidence of financing? Let's define what that means first. And then secondly, I want you, Brian, to address the, the financing and the funding. Because I do think that there is, at least some people in the public think that uh, the three of you are just taking cash out of your bank accounts to fund this, and I don't think that's what we're expecting. Okay. Um, so there is, a, for each component that comes to financing, that can be provided in a variety of different ways is required for the commencement of construction. Um, so, for example, when the commercial core starts, depending on, it, it is also not only by the component, but by the phase. So, in theory, the partners could go out and get it's probably the wrong term, but a jumbo loan, big loan for everything, and provide that evidence of financing, and they could get approval to start the whole project. Um, if, for example, what's happening in the marina is, because there are 17 phases, um, they are providing evidence of financing and separately to commence each phase. So they are coming to us at each phase and showing that they have financing. So give us an example for people who don't believe us. Give us an example of what evidence of financing looks like. So in this case, um, for the, the first couple of, of marina phases, it has been cash in the bank. So they've shown us uh, bank deposits that show that they have the uh, our money. Fourteen-ish million dollars, I believe that's for the first three phases okay. of the marina construction. So the, the goal is to be able to assure that they'll have the funding required to complete that. Now, in the event that something goes untoward, that money is also not available, they are required to also provide assurance of construction completion, which usually takes the form of a bond that names the county, so that if they, I don't know, if there's a 
if they all get kidnapped and then they take their bank accounts with them, um, then we can tap into that bond to make sure that the project gets done. Okay, so you heard some uh, disagreement or uh, disgruntledness about where the money is coming from because there, and by the way, I didn't vote on this project. I'm just here to sort of clarify and move it forward. So um, you heard that people are upset because they think that their fees are funding the construction. And there is an impression, there's a strong impression, because I've heard it many times in the community, that the board, when they voted on this in 2018, that they that the fees, the slip fees and other fees would not fund it. Can you address that, Matt? Well, the, I mean, the, the, in, in, at the end, the harbor is a user-funded harbor. It is not supported by taxpayer funds. Um, so under the Tadlands grant, the money that is, is made in the harbor stays in the harbor. Um, and that is a requirement of the Tadlands grant. So we do not generally tap into taxpayer funds to, you know, to build the harbor. And so the money that, it, it is true, the money that is made in the harbor funds the harbor. So to the extent that, that people are eating at the restaurants, they're, they're doing all of those things, that is the money that self funds the harbor. Okay, so now was there ever an expectation when this was voted on originally that, um, that that money that was generated in the harbor would not be used for the construction? No. Okay. And the, 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 the goal with bringing in the master lease was to, to create a situation where it better self-funded. In the years that the county um, was running it, there were, there were situations or times where we had to supplement uh, the running of the harbor with general parks funds, which is what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so um, you said 14 million was the evidence of financing about that um, at the last time that you had to review evidence of financing. So, and was that a combination of funding from revenue generated in the harbor and other funds? Yeah, that's, that, that is my impression. We didn't necessarily ask them where they got all of their money from. Okay. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> well, is that everyone? Yes. Yes. Everyone's upset about that. Is that a requirement for the master lease that the revenue generated from the harbor has to be from other funds? Yes. 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 And what different disbursements are, so we're aware of the money that's brought in, um, and you know, so I'm sure that we get into it better okay. where it came from. But that isn't the the goal is to get the harbor revived. Right. Okay. So Brian, since I got here, or even before I was elected, um, I've been hearing this concern about no evidence of financing, and so I do feel like that's something we just have to put to rest because. Um, that's a common complaint that I hear. Can you share, to the extent that it's uh, not confidential information, can you share what is, how are you financing this project? Well, I know we voted on something in the fall uh, for a, a re or some kind of a financing plan. And so can you just share what's the financing for the project? Maybe by phase, I don't know. Yeah, I think as Matt said, you know, the, uh, we are required to show evidence of financing as we move our, our construction forward. Uh, we're we, we're uh, developing phases in the case of the marina. We'll be developing in phases in the case of the commercial core. So, you know, we anticipate that when we start construction on the commercial core, when we're cleared for takeoff, we will show evidence of financing um, to, to be able to complete that phase. And then as we move forward with the next phase, we'll do the same thing. Okay, so there is a concern in the community, the, the boating community, that, um, that the primary source of the funding has shifted away from like financing or capital that you raise to reliance on the marina, specifically the slip fees. Can you address that? <laughs> we want to get to yes. Bill. We'll get to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll table I mean, that. We'll table that for Joe when he gets up. Okay. You know, I, I will say that look, we we have we have a harbor that has a lot of non-revenue no, generating a lot of non-revenue generating uses, right? I mean, we've got parkscape areas, we have picnic areas. We don't charge, nor will we do we anticipate ever charging 
rent for the public areas that we have in the harbor. We've got to improve those areas, we have to care for those areas, we have to maintain those areas. And so, it, it, in order to move this project forward, it has to be financially viable to be able to do that. And so what we're doing is we are making sure that we are able to uh, produce a project that's financially viable in all respects. We have, we have buckets of, of revenue where we can, we can create the revenue. I, th I, th I think that we're, you know, our, our uh, effort is gonna be to handle this responsibly and manage it in, in a controlled manner. And uh, you know we don't want to we don't want to charge any more rent than we need to to make this project viable. So we can move it forward. Okay, Brian, you're off the hot seat. Okay. 